Chances are, if you have a question, you can think of just in a few lines, you can get what you want to do on R. Welcome back to PhD Coffee Time. This is the online community for you as PhD student to get motivation, peer support, and practical tips during your PhD. The last week I shared about my favorite software, ImageJ, and if you missed that video, make sure to check the link in the description below. Today I'd like to share another really essential software because you can get a lot of data and you really, really need that analysis tool. Let me share my experience of using R as a programming language as well as the most essential data science tool for a lot of PhD. When I make this video, I assume my audience may not have any experience with R, but I hope by the end of this video, you get to have the overall idea of what this software does in biostatistics. What is the way to set up an environment that can help you as a beginner to learn the script as quickly as possible to start with an R Markdown notebook, as well as knowing where to find the resources to try out other people's code. When I first traveled to Europe 10 years ago in the Netherlands and the reason I traveled was because of R. I signed up to a biostatistics workshop and I paid for the flight ticket myself and used my annual holiday because I was excited to learn biostatistics. And you could know that it was the idea that I had in PhD about holiday is to go to Europe and learn R but it was a good trip and I really enjoyed it. R is also my first programming language and it's like any language you learn, it's a little scary and a little uncomfortable at first. Croissant s'il vous plaît and in the beginning when I come to France, I would say couchant s'il vous plaît and my advisor said to me, couchant means Cake, and when you go to a bakery, you ask for croissant with the R, and it was quite interesting moment. Like any language, it comes easier with time. Similar to Image J. R is also open source, also has a community all over the world that give you a lot of support. Chances are if you have a question you can think of about biostatistics, it will be out there and there is a programming line that you can write just in a few lines, you can get what you want to do on R. It's that powerful and that's why a lot of researchers really enjoy using R. And the other essential part is, is that it's not licensed, so you don't have to pay a fee to use it. And that's also meaning anyone can learn it. And when you have the skills, you can also share it with someone openly. And it's highly repeatable in research. I recommend any new user to R to install R Studio. You will be less lost than just writing line and lines of script with a window of conversation with the computer. And that was the environment I was trained when I first learned R and it's always feel a little scary to get into that window. I learned it a few years ago in America in a workshop. The tutor prepared a nice notebook with markdown of all the script that he already typed and as a beginner he just encouraged us to change a few things like silencing the script or press the shift control enter to run um, so that's like a training in the gym you start with easy level to more difficult moderate and i felt like r studio is a great beginner level and with r studio notebook you can be easier to trace where you were from yesterday to tomorrow and you can have a whole notebook to share with a friend. 
if you are having questions on your statistical method. Our studio is an integrated development environment that is built for using R. It is free and open source like R. I was surprised to realize there are versions of RStudio that are really expensive. That might also mean that it's really a powerful tool when the industry applications are upgrading it. R is an open source software, so that means you have a lot of solution to the same answer. And with a few lines of code, using the right library and the right function, you will be able to arrive at the beautiful plots that you will need to record or the statistical conclusion that you will need to arrive. Using other software, it may not give you the transparency of what are the calculations behind it. But if you use R, it is transparent because all the library have clear documentation on how they come to the calculation. You can share it with colleagues in an open manner so everyone can criticize and improve your methodology, which I think is the power of using R versus the paid software. So I want you to get away from this video knowing that there is names for a library and library comes with many functions. So it can be a way to plot a graph and it is coming with a library to plot. So you know that if you haven't launched a library in the page in your script, you will not be able to run that function. So this is the first problem I had when I first learned R is I always forget to run the library and I thought the function is not working well is because I didn't open the right library. Sounds too basic for people who know R but I am embarrassed to admit this is my problem and I wish someone could have shared that more directly to me that they come together. Any function comes with a library, you must have both. The, the library is like the key and the function is like the door. You have to have the key to open the door. You need to have the thinking of how they line up the data. They call it the data structure. So when you look at any R example, start with learning how people organize their table and use Excel just to build your data around the same way. Like two-way ANOVA, you always have to put the two factors as column and you repeat the name of the factor on the, the first two columns. And you also have the variable as a standalone one column and they have all the data in many rows. Each row is represents one observation. So these are the minor data structure things that you have to first learn how other people line up the data. You have Excel, you can line up your data structure exactly as what they needed. And then you export it to CSV, comma, separated values files. I know the more advanced R learner may have more to say about how to write from scratch to build your column and rows. And I think that was the time I feel really discouraged. R has a code that you can read by choosing the right CSV file and after opening that as a table, you can play with script. I think this is a fair place to ask anyone to start. And of course, if you are really interested in learning the script, I highly recommend you to go through a few more hours of R tutorials. They are everywhere on YouTube if you search R. And I hope from this video, it also opens you another idea besides searching cat video on the weekend. You may also think about what I can do with R and try to search it on the internet. And there are a lot of resources out there and they will not disappoint you. So I hope by the end of this video, you'll be encouraged to at least go and try installing R Studio. Try to export your data in CSV format and try to open it with R, have a feeling of how it works. Find one of the recent biostatistic problem you had, play with some script that you found on the forum with an R markdown page or for your own data. And with just a few lines of code, you'll be impressed, investing a few hours studying this programming language 
it will go a long way in helping you to become a good data scientist for your research. And with that, I want to conclude by saying in these really unpredictable days, programming is really logical. And if you have one comma missing, it will not run. And if you type it exactly the way it needs to, it will go well. It's like a little assurance to me when I make progress with data science and it's fun and practical to learn. So I hope you will share my joy. And I always make an analogy of programming is like a board game. You know, when people ask you to play board game, they will say, oh, since you draw this card, you're not allowed to move forward for another three rounds. And I think programming is very much like that. And I need to develop my reading skills and my patience when I'm learning programming. And it's a good challenge and a good group of muscle to train as a researcher. So I hope you enjoy this idea and give it a try. And maybe this will improve your research and save you some time from plotting on Excel. And thanks for watching. If you like my content, make sure to recommend my video to some friends. Tell them over a coffee break, you know, this is called PhD coffee time because I really hope more people can have exchange like this on what helped them, what are their struggles and expand that to more people. Please like this video if you think I'm teaching you something valuable and also make sure to subscribe so that you won't miss anything when it's coming up. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time. So I start every video by saying this is the platform for PhD motivation, peer support and practical tips. And I understand not everybody has a peer in your PhD lab. And that's exactly why I'm motivated to bring you this private Facebook group. And if you feel like you need more peer support in your PhD, this is the platform for you. Simply go to the Facebook page of PhD Coffee Time and click the private group session. I'm starting the first discussion topic in two weeks and I hope to see you there.